Registered Phenomena Code 108 Object Class Alpha Red Hazard Types Sensory Hazard Sentient Hazard Ideological Hazard Containment Protocols The entrance leading to RPC-108 is to be monitored at all times. Any unauthorized personnel entering the vicinity of RPC-108 are to be captured and administered Class A-1 amnestics in order to remove any memory of RPC-108 and its location. Class A-1 amnestics cause complete loss of all memories formed in the previous two to six hours. This grade is very stable. Chance of unintended side effects are virtually negligible, except in rare circumstances. After exploration number 1546-3, which resulted in deaths, further research and exploration on RPC-108 have been prohibited. Description: RPC-108 is a sewer located in France, which can only be accessed by a singular entry point located in RPC-108 appears as a structure two meters tall with brick walls. On the floor of RPC-108 is a thick black liquid of unknown origin. This liquid is present throughout the entire known length of the sewers, and is seemingly unable to leak out of RPC-108's immediate area. The tunnel of RPC-108 appears to be structurally unstable, though it shows no signs of imminent collapse. It is unknown how far the tunnel of RPC-108 extends and, as of yet, no discernible end to the tunnel of RPC-108 has been detected. Attempts to access RPC-108 by any means other than its main entrance will result in failure. So far, no way of breaking RPC-108 has been found. Any attempts to permanently modify RPC-108, such as installing metal bars on the entrance, were unsuccessful, as within 24 hours, it would anomalously revert back to its original state. During all explorations of RPC-108, subjects will, at some point, encounter RPC-108-1, which appears as two glowing eyes just out of reach of the subject's touch, blending in with the darkness. The nature of RPC-108-1 remains unknown, as there have been no direct encounters with it, and the anomaly does not exhibit any aggression or hostile intent, with the exception of stalking the subject, causing a great amount of fear of the subject. It is unknown whether or not the psychological effects are caused by anomalous effects or is simply a natural reaction. Addendum: RPC-108 travels in a completely linear path with no turns or course deviations present. Subjects claim to hear a constant dripping sound of unknown origin which moves as shown in Exploration Log number 1546-1. The interior of RPC-108 cannot be illuminated from the outside, and lighting sources no brighter than 124 watts have shown to have no effect in RPC-108. It is possible both RPC-108 and RPC-108-1 absorb excess lighting. Exploration Log number 1546-1 Subject CSD-1546-1 from now on. Designated CSD due to misbehavior around RPC. Equipment: one 125 watt LED lantern. Ten AA batteries for the LED lantern. One video streaming device. One decoy, and provisions and water for two days. CSD-1546-1. Steps into RPC-108 and turns on the LED lantern. The lantern could only illuminate an area of three meters in front of the subject, despite the wattage. Testing, testing. Can you hear me, CSD-1546? Yeah. What the hell is this liquid on the floor? It is unknown. Please move forward through the tunnel. What's that noise? Can you hear it? Nothing can be heard in the recording. No noise is being picked up by our side. Could you describe what you're hearing? It's like water dripping or something. Understood. Please continue. CSD-1546-1 continues walking for an approximate of one kilometer 
before the described noise can be heard in the recording. After ten more minutes of walking, CSD-1546-1 stops. What is it? It's starting to get real cold in here. I'm having a bad feeling about this. They are just hallucinations. Before proceeding, please put your decoy on the wall. CSD-1546-1 complies, after which he continues walking for seven minutes. The subject is now two kilometers inside of RPC-108. It moved. What? It moved. The sound. I can hear it behind me now. Did anything besides that change in the environment, or was it just the sound? No, just that. Then please, continue. CSD-1546-1 walks for a few more seconds before stopping. Two eyes can be seen on the other side of the sewer, RPC-108-1, approximately ten meters away. Holy sh! What the hell is that? Do you see it? Yes, we can see it. Could you please approach it so we can get a better look? Nah, I ain't going there. Screw this. We already talked about this. Please cooperate and approach it. RPC-108-1 is harmless. CSD-1546-1 hesitates for a second before approaching RPC-108-1, now two meters away from its immediate vicinity. The anomaly is surrounded by deep darkness, making photographic archival impossible. RPC-108-1 jerks towards CSD-1546-1, causing the subject to enter into a state of fear and scream in panic. Holy sh! Get this thing away from me! CSD-1546-1 turns around and begins to run. As the subject turns back, the lantern stops illuminating the area and surroundings cease to be visible. RPC-108-1 seems to keep a distance of two meters from CSD-1546-1 at all times. CSD-1546-1 runs approximately five kilometers in absolute darkness despite the fact his expedition only continued for two kilometers inside RPC-108. It is apparently impossible to leave RPC-108 after entering. After extended physical expenditure, CSD-1546-1 collapses. Heavy breathing can be heard in the recording. However, further inspection of logs confirm that it does not originate from CSD-1546-1. End log. Exploration Log Number 1546-2 Subject CSD-1546-2 from now on Designated CSD due to misuse of RPC Against Protocol Equipment 1 130W LED flashlight 10 AA batteries Streaming device Provisions for one day were also provided CSD-1546-2 steps into RPC-108. The subject hesitates for a few seconds before turning the flashlight on and starting to walk. Hello? Hello? Testing, can you hear me? Yes, sir. This place sure is dark. What am I supposed to do? Just walk? Indeed. Keep walking until you see or hear anything odd. Sure. CSD-1546-2 walks for a kilometer before stopping. Do you hear that? There's some sort of water leak. No noise is picked up by the recording device. However, after 32 seconds, the noise can be faintly detected. Yes, I hear it. Where is it coming from? I can hear it coming from deeper into the tunnel. Very well. Please continue. CSD-1546-2 continues to walk for five kilometers without encountering RPC-108-1, proving that its position isn't fixed. The subject stops to have a drink before continuing forward. At no point does CSD-1546-2 encounter either CSD-1546-1's body nor the decoy. It sure is dark in here. When should I turn back? We're now just focused on the expedition as agreed upon. Alright. CSD-1546-2 walks for approximately 200 more meters before encountering RPC-108-1. 
the subject freezes in place and responds to RPC-108-1. What is that thing? Is it dangerous? Subject displays signs of intense fear, shaking the flashlight. It is completely docile. Please approach it so we can get a better look. CSD-1546-2 approaches RPC-108-1. No features could be seen on RPC-108-1 besides two eye-like features. As CSD-1546-2 approaches RPC-108-1, light levels decrease in his immediate vicinity. Upon attempting physical contact with RPC-108-1, all visual data is immediately lost. Can you hear me? Are you there? What's happening? What's going on? I can't see anything. What the hell? Help! Help me, someone! CSD-1546-2 begins to scream hysterically. The screaming continues for approximately 20 minutes, after which the subject collapses. 30 minutes later, it could be heard the subject standing up and starting to walk. There was no visual feed, and the static was strong, though the sound of footsteps could be heard for two hours after the subject's collapse, before a signal being lost completely. Definite cause of death remains unknown, but later review of the footage suggests that CSD-1546-2 died of shock. It is unknown whether death was caused directly by RPC-108-1 or not. End log.